Good morning, and welcome to chapel at Christ Lutheran. I want you to do me a favor right now. So I'm downstairs, and I want to be able to hear you to make sure that you're watching with me. Say good morning really loud, okay? On the count of three, we're going to do it together. One, two, three. Good morning! Awesome job, guys. We are so glad to be able to be here today. And as always, we gather in the name of our awesome God, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Now over to Mr. Howard for some music. Good morning, CLS. Welcome to chapel. My name is Mr. Howard. I am the minister of worship and music at Christ Lutheran Church. And I am so happy that you joined me to worship our God together. Let's start with a song. It's called King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Since we're not able to sing out loud in our classrooms, we're going to use American Sign Language. You're gonna need both hands. Watch me and do what I do. The sign for king, you're gonna take your V and turn it sideways and then put your thumb in the middle of the V. That's the letter K in sign language. And then the sign for king is you show the banner that a king would wear across his chest. So you put your K on your shoulder and then move it down to your waist. That's the sign for king. Do it with me. King. The sign for of actually means above. Jesus is king above all kings. So you're gonna take this hand and put it flat. Take this hand and put it flat a little over the top and then make a little circle or two or three. That's the sign for of. King of kings. Lord is just the letter L with the banner. Lord of lords. Glory is a fun one. Put your hand out like someone's gonna give you something. Take your other hand, tap it, and then sprinkle like stars up into the air. That's the sign for glory. Now we're gonna do one clap, nice and loud. Boom. Don't say boom. Then you're gonna do hallelujah. This is a fun one too. If you've ever played baseball, pretend you're holding a baseball bat, Take your pointer fingers and make little hooks. Then you're going to tap them together and make spirals up into the air. That's the sign for hallelujah. This is the whole first half of the song. You're doing great. Let's try it again. King of kings and lord of lords, glory. Hallelujah. Good job, you do that twice. You're halfway there. Here is the sign for Jesus. Since he had nails in his hands for us when he died on the cross, we're going to put our finger in each imaginary nail hole. That's the sign for Jesus. Jesus. Prince is just an upside down K with the banner. Prince, we don't do of. The sign for peace, take your hand, palm out, thumb down. Take your other hand, palm facing you, thumb up, and put them together. Then you're going to pretend you're squishing a bug, and you're going to squish, turn around, and come down like you're calming somebody. So here's the second half of the song. Jesus. Prince of Peace. Glory. Hallelujah. Let's sing the whole thing together. You sing with your hands. I'll sing with my voice in my hands. We'll do it nice and slow. King of kings and Lord of lords. Glory. Jesus. 
Jesus, Prince of Peace, Glory, Hallelujah, Jesus, Prince of Peace, Glory, Hallelujah. You ready to do it just a little faster? Okay, one more time. King of kings and Lord of lords, glory, hallelujah. King of kings and Lord of lords, glory, hallelujah. Jesus, Prince of peace, glory, hallelujah. Jesus, Prince of Peace, Glory, Hallelujah. You did it! Great job, CLS. One of my favorite uh, Bible verses that's talking about confession is Psalm 51. David cries out to God and says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. He's crying out to God to, to change his life from the inside out. And only God can do that. Only God can change our hearts to love him more than we love ourselves. And so today we take a moment to confess our sins to him, to tell him truthfully what he already knows about us. So we confess our sins together by saying, Dear Jesus, please forgive me sins. Amen. Well, the great thing is, is that because of Jesus, he does forgive us all of our sins. He separates them as far as the east is from the west. He makes us white as snow. He lets us know that we're always his children. So I'll tell you now that all your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I saw this picture on Facebook recently, and it made me laugh. Here it is. If 2020 was a scented candle, I know you can just imagine the smell of burning porta potties. I want everybody to hold their nose and say, "Pew!" That was disgusting. Well, after I stopped laughing, God's Spirit spoke to my heart and said, that's a lie. 2020 was not all bad. To help you understand this idea, I have a little story to share with you. Stop me, don't stop me if you've heard it, because it's a popular story. There was a Chinese farmer who bought a horse. The horse ran away, and a neighbor says, that's bad news. The farmer says, good news, bad news, who can say? The horse comes back and brings another horse with him. Good news, you might say. The farmer gives the second horse to his son, who takes him for a ride. The horse throws the young man and he breaks his leg really badly. The concerned neighbor says, so sorry for your bad news. The farmer says, good news, bad news, who can say? About a week later, the emperor's men come to the village and take every able-bodied man to fight in a war. Because of his broken leg, the farmer's son is spared. Good news. And it keeps going like that. That farmer's tale reminds me of the Bible verse from Romans 8. It's one of my favorite promises from God. Here it is. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Romans 8, 28. That's a nice thought. But Mr. Howard, do you have an example? I'm so glad you asked. Yes, I do. Let's take this COVID-19 pandemic. It's a bad thing. 
So many people got sick. Many older people died from this disease. We were upset when the state closed schools and churches. I really miss my handbell students in grades five through eight. And I'm so bummed that we can't practice after school and we can't play in worship yet. I can't even come to your classroom to visit and welcome you back to campus and say hello. We had to move worship from in-person right here to online, much like you're doing right now. And we thought there is no way we can produce a quality worship experience for people on their devices at home. People will stop giving offerings and we'll be in big trouble. Have you had that happen where your brain will take the worst possible thing and just dwell on it over and over again? That's what my brain was doing. Well, here's what happened. Thanks to some really gifted staff people, we were able to produce a quality online worship experience. In fact, officials from our Pacific Southwest District told us that our online services were the best ones in our whole district. Our offerings did not go down and we were able to reach more people online with the good news about Jesus than we could have ever reached in person. But by far the best result is that God's kingdom grew. Very recently, we celebrated a baptism of a mom-to-be who saw Pastor Travis on TV praying at the La Mesa riots. And she and her husband decided to join our church and have her baptized. God knows what he is doing, even when we do not. And he is still fulfilling his promise to work for good, even when bad things happen. Riots, bad. Baptism, priceless. So I want to encourage you, the next time you have something bad happen in your life, I want you to remember to ask God to show you how he is working it for your good. Now it may take a while and his answer might even be no, but keep asking and keep trusting that his promises never fail. He will make bad things happen for good. You can count on it. Please pray with me. Dear Lord, thank you for keeping all of your promises. We are especially grateful for your promise in Romans 8, 28, to work out everything that happens to us for good, even when really bad things happen. Help us to trust you in all things and not trust in our own limited understanding. Direct our steps to follow you all the days that you give us until you come back to take us home to be with you forever. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who took the worst thing, dying on the cross and made it the best thing, saving us from our sins and giving us new life. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now go with God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Now let's sing that final song. Let's close our chapel with a song called Jesus in the Morning. And it has motions so you can sing at home and on your classroom with your hands. It goes like this. You already know the sign for Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus in the morning, Jesus at the noontime, 
Jesus, Jesus, Jesus when the sun goes down. Love him, love him. Love him in the morning, love him at the noontime. Love him, love him, love him when the sun goes down. And then the only changes are thank him and serve him. Let's sing it together. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus in the morning, Jesus at the noontime, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus when the sun goes down. Love him, love him, love him in the morning, love him at the noontime, love him, love him, love him when the sun goes down. Thank him, thank him, thank him in the morning, thank him at the noontime. Thank him, thank him, thank him when the sun goes down. Serve him, serve him, serve him in the morning, serve him at the noontime. Serve him, serve him. Serve him when the sun goes down. Have a great day, CLS. Hello, friends. Happy Chapel Day. I love Wednesdays. I love that we're together in our classrooms, offices, at home, wherever we might be enjoying chapel worship together. Thank you to Mr. Howard for leading us both in our music and in our message this week. I love the verse that Mr. Howard used from um, Romans, and Romans 8 is one of my very favorite chapter, chapters in the Bible, and I'm going to read the verse he used again today. Romans 8, 28 says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his service. So in God's word in Romans, it doesn't say only good things will happen to us if we follow Jesus. It says that if we follow Jesus, he'll bring even good stuff out of the rotten stuff in our life. So even as we navigate everything related to COVID and how different things are at school and at home, God is going to work good things through that. Even though we've lost people that we love so much to cancer and other illnesses, God promises to work good out of that really bad stuff. Now, we don't know when he's going to work good or how quickly he's going to work good. We're not on God's timetable. Uh, we just don't know when he's going to bring about good. But he promises he will. And that brings me a lot of hope when we go through hard things. So I love Romans 8, 28. I hope you'll study that more and that you'll go back to that verse over and over and over in your life when things are hard and that you'll remember God always brings good things out of hard situations. We have a lot of fun stuff on the horizon for us. Today, you should all be dressed in your Padres attire as we're having a fun spirit day to celebrate the first day of playoffs for the Padres. Uh, this is really to love on Mr. Payne, who has been an avid Padres fan his entire life. And I know you all know the Padres have never won the World Series and they haven't been to the playoffs since 2006. So in order to celebrate today, we're all in our Padres colors. I'm filming this the day before, so I'm not in my Padres attire right now, but I happen to be wearing Padre colors already. So that will be super fun. I hope you participated. Spirit days are so fun. If you didn't participate today, don't worry. We'll have extra spirit days in the future. So go Padres. All right, next Wednesday, we're gonna premiere our back to school night video at 6 p.m. 
So when you go home after school next Wednesday, you wanna make plans to watch our back to school night video with your family. So it's only gonna premiere at 6 p.m. Now, if you can't join us right at six, that's fine. You can watch it later in the evening or another night, but we wanna try and watch it all together at 6 p.m. because that will be super fun. And one of the things we're gonna do is on your way home that day when you get picked up from the car line or if you're in kindergarten, when you get picked up from kindergarten, we're gonna send home this fun little goodie bag to your families. So it's gonna have candy and popcorn and all sorts of other fun little things about and from Christ Lutheran School and Christ Lutheran Church. So each of you are gonna get one. Each of the students at Christ Lutheran School are gonna get one. So don't worry, you don't have to share yours with your brother or sister. And we're gonna celebrate Christ Lutheran School and celebrate back to school night. Even though we can't all join together on campus, we're gonna join together in our houses and enjoy popcorn and goodies and our amazing school. So that is gonna be next Wednesday at 6 p.m. And don't worry, we'll send the link to your parents and get everybody ready for that. So with that, have a great day. Jesus be with you.